it's not just young that we're uh, losing. The young are the courageous, the ambitious, the risk takers that we need to spurn on the economy. In all honesty, when I left the state, uh, I had no problem finding a job in my destination. When I came back to the state, it took me 10 months to find a job. And really, you know, after those years out there, I was more qualified now than when I was when I left the state. Me staying here through those 10 months might be more of a testament to my own stubbornness than anything else. We don't just live for our jobs, hopefully. So, you know, we want to be able to do things. We want to go to a nice movie theater. We want to go to an art gallery. We want to see things and do things in our private time that, that entertain us, that keep us, you know, occupied. We have a voice, but we're not expressing it. If you think about movers and shakers and legislation and policy, you think about like the AARP or uh, a labor union. Uh, where's the young group uh, representation? For decades, West Virginia's young people have been leaving the state for educational, employment, and living opportunities. We now have fewer people under the age of 18 and the oldest population of all the states in the nation, according to the 2000 United States Census. As the aging population requires more intensive state services, the traditional economic tax base of young single workers and established families is declining as young adults relocate to begin careers and families. According to a 2002 poll, today's youth plan to continue the trend of migration out of the state. 17% of the young adults surveyed say it is probable or very probable that they will move out of the state in the next five years. It is important to understand why youth aren't able to find the opportunities they need here in West Virginia. In the survey, young adults emphasized limited career and economic opportunities as the most significant reasons for their plans for leaving their home state. Seventy-eight percent of young West Virginians believe the state's hillbilly stereotype makes it more difficult to attract businesses and workers from other states. Many people also feel that the stereotypes have a negative effect on West Virginians' self-esteem and their confidence in addressing issues. These assumptions often cloud the truth about the education of West Virginia residents. A study ranked West Virginia fifth in the country for high school graduation rates. West Virginia also has the highest college readiness rate in the country. Although these educational achievements should be providing West Virginia with a foundation for economic success, other states are reaping the benefits. This trend paints a gloomy picture of West Virginia's economic future. The purpose of this forum is to examine different ways to address the problem of youth leaving West Virginia. How can we reverse this exodus? How do we provide future generations with the opportunities they need to be successful? How do we encourage youth that have already left the state to come home? The forum you are participating in today is the result of the work of a team of college students from eight different colleges and universities in the state, in conjunction with the West Virginia Campus Compact and the West Virginia Center for Civic Life. The students researched diverse aspects of the issue and conducted hundreds of interviews with residents of West Virginia including young adults, parents, community leaders, employers, workers, and retirees. The students will serve as neutral moderators of the discussions and work with others to address some of the needs that arise. In this forum, we want to understand the issues and consider different approaches. We will weigh the benefits and trade-offs. We want to identify common ground and where we disagree. And finally, we will explore what actions we can take individually and together. We will discuss three possible approaches for supporting West Virginia's future generations. Many people feel that to keep our youth and attract new citizens, West Virginia should increase its training and employment opportunities. Others feel that more should be done to encourage West Virginians to connect with other cultures and share our experiences with others outside the state. And others feel that we need strong leadership and involvement by individuals and communities who are committed to change in the interest of future generations. Now, let's take a closer look at each of these approaches. According to Approach 1, we must build career and advancement opportunities for youth. Lack of jobs is frequently given as a reason that young people leave West Virginia. 
They want attractive entry-level employment and internships with potential for career advancement. Jobs in West Virginia usually pay less than they do in other states, even when adjusted to allow for the difference in cost of living. Additionally, West Virginia's unemployment rate has frequently exceeded the national average, particularly in rural counties. Scarce employment drives youth away from West Virginia and prevents those who have started careers elsewhere from moving here. We should not expect youth to stay in an economic situation that compromises their future. The state should be attracting businesses with opportunities for young people through financial incentives and infrastructure development. Youth entrepreneurship must be encouraged and high technology education must be available. However, new businesses and economic development efforts have a difficult time becoming financially viable, particularly in rural counties. These efforts would only benefit youth in some areas of the state, while others would be neglected. According to Approach 1, we can support future generations by creating a business climate that provides high-paying jobs and career advancement opportunities. To initiate Approach 2, we must share West Virginia's traditions and the world's diversity by building connections to the rest of the world. West Virginians are proud of their ties to family and land. However, emphasizing local identity without a global perspective generates feelings of isolation. The experiences of current state residents, especially youth, are limited by the lack of access to diverse racial and cultural opportunities. Isolationism may deter people from moving to the state. While immigrants have flocked to other states and metropolitan areas, fewer than 6,000 foreign-born people moved to West Virginia during the 1990s. Even today, the population of West Virginia remains 95% white. The state's elected officials are primarily middle-aged men. The 134 elected officials in West Virginia's Senate and House of Delegates are older Caucasian males, with the exception of fewer than 30 representatives. This approach argues that we must increase awareness of and sensitivity to people from different cultures through educational and cultural events. We should expand programs that connect youth in West Virginia to youth outside the state and country. By aggressively marketing West Virginia to tourists around the country and the world, others can come to appreciate our Appalachian heritage. However, cultural change is difficult and takes a long time to achieve. Increasing diversity often leads to conflict. It is difficult to get communities to invest in diversity when there are no immediate payoffs. To attract and keep young adults in West Virginia, we must provide new cultural experiences while preserving and respecting our Appalachian heritage. According to Approach 3, we must build individual and community strengths. To create change for young adults, young adults and their communities need to have a voice in the issues that concern them. West Virginia has succeeded in registering most eligible voters. Unfortunately, many of those registered do not make their voices heard at the polls. The majority of West Virginians ages 18 to 34 do not feel that they have an effective voice in state government or in local civic or social organizations, according to a poll. Voter participation among 18 to 25 year olds was at record lows during the 1998 election, with only 16.6% .6 of eligible voters participating. It is important to create opportunities for youth to get involved in local government, nonprofit, and private businesses. Legislative reforms and voter education would require elected officials to be accountable for decisions that they make regarding youth. Public media campaigns emphasizing West Virginia's strengths combat negative stereotypes, and allow young people to develop confidence in the state. However, it is difficult for busy people to become more involved in local or state decision-making. Legislative reforms could lead to the loss of experienced legislators. Positive public media campaigns ignore the realities of the state's economic and social situation. To implement Approach 3, young people should take a more active leadership role in the issues and policies that affect them. Now it's your turn. What are the advantages and trade-offs of each approach? What are we willing to do together and individually to address the issues? How do we create a West Virginia that provides opportunities for future generations?